All right, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We are, yep, 1040. So um, yeah, this is gonna be kind of a quick primer. Um, how many of you have used Jupyter or Jupyter Hub? Not necessarily at Nurse, but maybe anywhere. Okay, a couple people, cool. Um, for the record, I love Jupiter. I'm a big fan of Jupiter. I pretty much use it all the time. So, um, you know, pardon me if I sound kind of biased and <laughs> excited about it, but um, I think it's a really nice way to interact with our system if you don't have a ton of HPC experience. But even if you do, it it has, you know, a lot of cool things that make things a little bit easier, kind of that has the point and click, a little bit of a GUI. Um, so, so when we say Jupiter, um, it's actually, it, it kind of means a bunch of different things. Um, so it, it, there, there's several, Jupiter is used to describe several different things. Um, there's Jupiter Lab, which was basically a way of, of hosting and running these interactive notebooks. Um, and it was in particular for Python. That's why it's got the PY. So I think it really started as a Python thing, but it has expanded to become uh, a bunch of different things. It's not just Python anymore. It's really useful for Python users, but it's not just for that. Um, and so these notebooks can do a lot of different things. They are, they're, so first of all, they're interactive. So you can be coding in there and then you can run that cell and it will just run that little tiny amount of Python. So you don't have to prepare a whole script and then you know run it in your, in your um, terminal or something like that. You could just run, uh, little parts of your scripts. Um, and not, again, not just Python, there's other um, uh, languages that it can do as well, like R and Julia. Um, it's also really great for visualization because then you could have, you know, I do this for like, plotting a lot and I'm just gonna pull up Jupyter and show you some things in there if you haven't used it. Um, you can use it for visualization. Um, people use it to prepare like kind of like tutorial type things because you can actually have markdown. So you can have um, markdown explaining, you know, like, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing, especially if you're going to, you know, for me, what nowadays when I work with Jupiter, I work with a student, um, like a summer student or something. And so it's nice sometimes to be able to put in comments about like, okay, here's why I was doing this, here's what you need to do, and so forth. So you can have in line some markdown and then some code and and so forth. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons you might do this. Um, like I mentioned, you know, it's it's not, when I'm doing data exploration, data cleaning, I like to do it because then I can write some code, run it, see if it did the thing I wanted to do and then iterate really fast. Um, you know, you can even use it for simulations. Um, visualization, as I've mentioned, is a really good thing. Um, I also really liked it for when I was doing machine learning because I could actually watch you know, you can actually watch the progress of your of your training, uh, you know, converging as your loss, you know, kind of converges and so forth. Um, because it's interactive, it'll keep refreshing that plot for you and you can like, watch the loss improve and so forth. Um, and so there's a lot of different reasons you might be interested in using Jupyter, mostly because of the interactivity of it. Um, so it's very, very, very easy to use. Um, you just, uh, you, the best part is, in my opinion, <laughs> that it runs in your browser. So you just go to jupyter.nurse.gov. And um, I'm actually going to, let's see, I have already signed in, but let me go back to, um, sorry, hub control panel. So once you sign in and you are going to have to do um, your your username, your password and your MFA, just like you would for do, using SSH, um, you'll see this screen here. Um, so this screen, um, hopefully you can see this, um, it gives you a bunch of different options and you'll see I have a server running on a login node on Perlmutter. So it's, I can get back to it. So if I, let's say, so this is that tab that I have that's running my, um, server on, on this login node. If I close the um, browser, that doesn't end the session. So if I wanna get back to it, I can do that by just coming back to this hub control panel and going back to my server. I can click on that button. If I don't have one and I need to start one, you just click on it. And what that will do is it will, it's actually submitting a job, right? Because these, these sessions that you're gonna run on Jupyter is a job on Perlmutter, but it has a certain priority. So it, it, it actually has a pretty high priority because they're meant to be very short um, um, jobs. Um, especially if you do like the shared GPU node um, or you know the login node, those will be pretty fast um, because uh, they're shared and they're only available for a certain amount of time. I think the default time 
Um, I thought it was six hours, but now I want to say it's four hours. So what that means is at the end of four hours, your session will time out um, and it will kill the job. And so if you need to get back in there, you'll just have to restart your, your server, okay? Um, and down here, it explains what these different things mean. So the login node is kind of like what we've talked about. It's like just where you would enter normally if you SSH'd into Perlmutter. Um, there's the shared GPU node. So this would give you a single GPU on um, uh, uh, one of those, you know, one CPU for GPU nodes. So you'd have one of those, someone else might be on the other one. Um, but this is a really good way, especially if you just need to test something out um, you, and you don't need more than one GPU, that's a good way to do that. Um, and then basically exactly what you see here, exclusive CPU node, you'll get both CPUs on a CPU node, exclusive GPU node means you'd get all four GPUs on a GPU node. And then the last thing here is a conf configurable job. Um, and so what this means, and I'll actually, let's see if I can, yeah. So um, this is going to be the option that gives you the most flexibility with using Jupyter. So let's say you want to test something, you want to test some MPI code or some you know, MPI for Pi or something. And so you need to have more than one node. Um, so I would go to this configurable node um, and then I would suggest, uh, select which account. So just, just the same way as Charles just showed you with your um, uh, account options in your S batch, um, you'll just, pick which account. Um, a lot of these things you may not need to change. Um, like for example, if you want all the, the um, cores on a node, you just leave this alone. If you want all the GPUs, you could ask for two GPUs. And it says, and the nice thing here is it tells you um, for the Jupyter QoS, which QoS is the quality of service, um, or yeah, I think it's quality of service, but basically it's the queue that you're submitting your job to. The max you could get for Jupyter is four. Um, so again, this is the way if you need to test some code um, on a couple of nodes before you start running um, larger jobs and so forth. Um, it's also really nice because you can get access to the reservation. Um, so if you have a reservation and you wanna be using it interactively, you can do that um, using this option. Um, and again, here, it, it kind of tells you what each thing is. If it doesn't and you don't really know and you don't wanna worry about it, just don't worry about it. Just leave it as the default value. Um, okay, let me go back to my slides. Um, I didn't want to use the slides too much, kind of like what we're trying to do is make it a little bit more uh, interactive. So let's go back here. Um, okay, so I just explained all those. I explained the configure. And this, and again, these slides are available to you. So if you want to see, you know, the context that we're I'm providing here, the slides are available to you. Uh, but I kind of like showing it interactively because um, that's kind of the point of Jupyter. Um, so this is what the interface will look like. And I'm actually, I'm going to go, I'm just going to show you in here. Um, so when you arrive in Jupyter, you will see, and I have the dark mode on because I just prefer that. Um, but you can actually change, I think in view um, or settings, maybe theme. Yeah. Okay. So we can switch it back and forth, whichever you prefer. Um, and you'll start with this launcher. So you'll see it's, first of all, it's telling me this is in, ho in my home directory. And um, you will, you can pick, you know, like the, these are different types of, of notebooks and they're different kernels. Um, so uh, I mean, I would talk about kernels in a second, but it's basically like the environment that you're running in. And so you'll see here, there's a lot. So some of these are mine, like I, I had certain environments that I made and I wanted to be able to quickly access them. So my env is one of those. <laughs> um, but then there's some that are, um, that we provide, that nurse provides to you. So for example, if you're gonna be using TensorFlow or PyTorch often, those are ones that people use quite often, you can just use this environment. So you just click on this and it'll give you a notebook that already has um, you know, this uh, PyTorch available to you. So if I do, I think this will work. I haven't actually done this. So I feel like uh, I haven't done this in a long time. Let's see, is that going to do anything? Oh, I think it, it's called something else, right? I don't remember. Let's see. Oh, I didn't use the TensorFlow one. Um, I think this should hopefully work because TensorFlow is huge. Okay, that works. There we go. So, so now I didn't have to worry about installing anything, and it tells you which version it is, right? So now um, that that's pretty easy. Um, yeah, I, I don't really use PyTorch. Sorry, so I don't really know about PyTorch, but um, uh, okay. So and then um, right. So so and the nice thing, the other nice thing I really like about um, uh, Jupiter is that there is this nice file browser thing. So for me, it's really easy because. 
I, I like to be able to click around. I mean, you, if you, if you don't want to click around, you don't want to do this. The other option you have is to open a terminal. Um, so this is a terminal now that's on, um, you know, uh, let's see if I do, oops, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is what I'm on, right? Or I think I can just do this. I don't do this very often. No, whatever. Okay. So, um, um, oh, I should do echo. Sorry. See, I don't do this often, so I've forgotten everything. There we go. Um, so, so we're on a login node right now, right? So this is a terminal on a login node, and um, which is what I, which if you remember from my control panel, that's where I asked for a server. Um, and I, now I can do the same thing I would do normally. So I can CD into my scratch. Um, now I'm in my scratch. I can CD to. Uh, CFS, um, and I press tab, which just shows the actual, um, but now you can see all of the the um, uh, community file system, like all these different projects, and then I can CD into, you know, wherever I need to go. So this is our like staff directory or whatever. Um, so just the same as it would be in your um, uh, SSH, uh, like if you terminal you use a terminal to SSH. Um, I like to do this sometimes because it makes like copying files around a little bit easier. You can do, you know, the method of right click if you um, uh, want to, and then it has all these, you can delete, copy, cut, paste, download. That's a nice one. Sometimes if it's a small file, you can actually just directly download it. Um, but if you want to, you know, you want to CP some file specifically to some other location, um, sometimes you can do that in terminal. It's a little bit easier. Um, and then, uh, you know the real the real powerful thing about um, Jupiter and in particular Jupiter like notebooks is stuff like this right so when I was um, you know doing some more uh, research uh, I I don't do much of this now um, but I wanted to iterate on making this plot look a little bit better because it's you know it's a little bit busy and I wanted to work on it um, I liked the interactivity because now the data is in here and I can just change something and run it again and um, it'll it'll just pop up here and I don't have to like submit a script or do anything like that. So the interactivity of these notebooks is what I think is really powerful and you can just do like code snippets and I even have, so at some point I was doing some kind of, uh, uh, um, this is me doing my data, data exploration as you can see it's just me trying to figure out what's where and you know do some some random like just trying to figure some stuff out and it's it's a really nice way to just like you know run code and and see what works and see what doesn't work so i think that's um another really powerful thing about jupiter um the last couple of things i want to mention is um, are these kernels. So the kernel, and I did mention briefly, is what's actually running your code on Jupyter. So that was um, like the PyTorch uh, kernel that I failed to show that it works. Um, the uh, TensorFlow kernel, uh, where I just at, selected that TensorFlow kernel, and then I didn't have to worry about installing. It was just using the TensorFlow that's already there on our system. Um, but you can make your own kernel. And so we have really, really good instructions on how to do this. Um, I don't necessarily want to go through it because it's, um, first of all, the, 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 the instructions online are very good, um, but it's also just kind of looking at a bunch of code, um, which is a little bit hard to do. But let me show you. Um, so we have these great, um, so if you go to our documentation and you go to Jupyter, um, you'll see, so first of all, we have a great overview of everything that I'm talking about in, in Jupyter, but then we have these how-to guides. And so really it's just, you go in here and say, okay, I have made a Conda environment. I'd like to have it available to me as a, as a kernel. That's a, what I did because I had an environment that I needed to use all the time interactively. Um, so how do you set up that uh, kernel? And it's, um, you need to set up this kernel spec um, and it's pretty fast. Then let's say you need to have some other environment avail variables available in your Python kernel. There are ways to specify that using this kernel spec file. And again, these instructions here walk you through exactly what to do. You're gonna just enter this code in and it'll show you, you know, here's what you need to change. If you wanna do this, you can do, you know, do it this way. 
um, and so forth. So we've got how to use a container to run a Jupyter kernel, you know, if you're using Matplotlib and we have some other uh, troubleshooting as well. So I highly recommend using these how-to guides. They step you through everything uh, once you know what you're trying to do. And if there's anything that's here that is confusing or um, it didn't show you what you needed to do, then um, it's a really good idea to reach out to us because um, uh, first of all, a lot of people do this. So it's good for us to know that our documentation could be approved in some way so that other users have access to that information. Uh, but also, you know, we want to make sure that you're able to do whatever you're trying to do and we would help you with that. Um, so, so again, the, the slides are going to be available again, I, it's just looking at some code and I didn't want to subject you to that. Um, but if you need it, I'd like you to go and use those, uh, how to, because then you can just like copy and paste the code lines that you need. And then the last thing I want to mention is that the Jupyter usage is, um, really increasing at NERSC. And so as you can see here, it started pretty low. And now as of like, um, uh, January, it's in the thousands, right? 1,400 uh, users. And so um, we are really actively trying to support Jupyter users. Um, as you, again, hopefully can tell, I really like Jupyter. I think it's a great tool. Um, I think it makes HPC usage more approachable. Um, and so uh, if you are interested, you know, if you, you know, don't, don't feel like Jupyter is some kind of like, oh, you know, I have to use a terminal and it has to be, you know, no, you can use Jupyter because it has a lot of benefits as well. You can use both. Um, great. So um, that's really a primer. Um, and if you have questions, please do let me know.